This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist gives you all the key insights of best-selling non-fiction books by transforming them into powerful packs that you can read or listen to in just 15 minutes. We'll talk more about Blinkist later, but for now, let's get on with this video on how to be productive from the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius was the emperor of Rome from 161 to 180 AD and is considered as the last of the five good emperors. During his rule, Aurelius found the time to construct a series of autobiographical writings now known as the Meditations. In these writings, the Roman emperor offered a number of key insights on how to be productive. And so, here are six of the most important insights for productivity from the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius. Number 1. Manage your emotions well. Marcus Aurelius says, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Marcus Aurelius's rule was marked by warfare, revolt, plague, and many other challenges. The last decade of his life was particularly difficult with the revolt of General Cassius, the death of his wife, chronic physical pains, and the realization that his son Commodus would not be the man Marcus had hoped for. He knew that he couldn't control all that happened to him, but he could control how he responded. Instead of complaining and letting anything affect his focus and productivity, he chose to see each obstacle as a way to move forward. Through the stoic routine, he was able to master his emotions and got the work done. There are lots of factors that can affect our productivity on a daily basis. The food we eat, the weather, how well we've slept the night before, the difficulty of the task at hand, and so on. But one of the most underestimated and often overlooked factors is your mood. Several studies have now shown the importance of emotions on your performance. One recent study of customer service representatives found that a bad mood made employees perform worse than those in a good mood and made them likely to take more breaks throughout the day, lowering their total time working. Conversely, as well as taking fewer breaks than those who weren't happy, those who were in a good mood tended to be about 10% more productive and produce better work overall. When you're happy, you're in a good mood. A good mood makes you enthusiastic and focused. When you're experiencing negative emotions such as anger, sadness or anxiety, you're in a bad mood. And when you're in a bad mood, you're stressed or even depressed. And to make yourself feel better in the moment, you start looking for distractions like catching up on cat videos or doom scrolling your Twitter feed, which further leads to procrastination. The study also showed that employees' moods when they first arrived at work generally stayed the same throughout the day. Despite what happened during their workday, morning moods were a very strong indicator of what the representatives' moods would be like by the end of the day which means that starting the day in a good mood is paramount for doing your best work. So, what can we do to improve our mood? Apart from prioritizing sleep, exercising, focusing on your diet, and following other healthy routines that would boost our mood, the Stoics would advise us to use a technique called negative visualization. Negative visualization is a technique to anticipate the worst so that we can adequately prepare ourselves for the challenges that lie ahead. By asking yourself what could go wrong, you imagine the worst case scenarios like your boss being in a bad mood, particularly bad traffic or irritating people you may encounter and so on. This way, you're not only preparing yourself for these challenges, but you're helping yourself to stay calm if any of these unfortunate events should occur, since you have already envisioned them happening to you. So, if your boss shouts at you for something, you'll experience fewer negative emotions because you were already prepared for them. This way, you can focus on the task at hand. Number 2. Do less. To quote Marcus Aurelius, If you seek tranquility, do less. 
Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, reminds himself of the importance of doing less in life and cutting out the superfluous actions from his own. Even though he was a very busy man with many obligations and responsibilities, he felt that most of what we say and do is not essential. If you take his advice and ask yourself at every moment, is this necessary? Then you'll be able to eliminate the things that aren't required, giving you more time and more tranquility. In our modern world, we've been taught that if we want more money, peace of mind, or recognition, we need to do more, to add more to our ever-growing to-do list. However, according to the evidence, if we truly want to be productive and happy, we should actually be doing less. The author of Your Brain at Work, David Rock, found that we're truly focused on our work a mere six hours per week, which is in stark contrast to our collective 40-hour work week. When you stop doing the things that make you feel busy, aren't getting you results, but are draining you of energy, then you end up with more than enough time for what matters. As people with full lives, with friends, kids, careers, hobbies, passions and such like, we need to apply the wisdom of doing less to give ourselves more time and alleviate stress without jeopardizing our results. We need to identify what not to do. For that, we can use Pareto's 80-20 principle that says that 80% of your results are being driven by 20% of your efforts. This helps a lot with our productivity because when we understand that the vast majority of our results are being driven by a small percentage of our efforts, we can pinpoint which efforts are driving the best results for us and focus our energy on those. So, for example, let's say that you're in sales and you've a long list of clients to call each day. And once you study your data, you realize that 80% of your orders come from just a few clients. You could get more done and drive more revenue if you focused your time and energy on those few clients, instead of running yourself into the ground trying to manage your entire client base and getting completely overwhelmed in the process. The goal is to devote energy to those two to three most important tasks that are likely to give us higher returns. Number three, strategize. Marcus Aurelius teaches us, the first thing to do, don't get worked up. The next thing to do, consider carefully the task at hand for what it is, while remembering your purpose is to be a good human being. Marcus lived a successful life because he was extremely self-disciplined. Each morning he followed a routine in which he would visualize all the possible outcomes of how he would approach this day, the people he would deal with, and the work he would do. He would then strategize on how he'd go about everything in his day. Most of us, when we start working on something, start with unrealistic expectations. We fail to think clearly about the process, and this lack of uncertainty leads to procrastination. Not having a strategy will almost certainly lead to failure. Once you figure out your important tasks, you need to systematically break each and every task down into individual steps from the start to the end. This means forming an effective plan of action that consists of a deadline for accomplishing the tasks. It should be built on the foundation of mini milestones that break your goal down into manageable chunks. Mini milestones will ensure that you're working towards your desired outcome in small pieces and time blocks, giving you a more realistic sense of what you can accomplish. This tactic puts you in the driver's seat as you'll be able to see any potential hurdles and take any required action. It gives you a sense of control over the tasks and projects you're working on, and once you have such clarity, it's that much less likely that you'll end up procrastinating. Number four, start your day with your most difficult task. According to Marcus Aurelius, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. It is well known that Marcus would tackle his most difficult tasks first. He never procrastinated on doing hard work or put off unpleasant duties. 
He had a job to do, and even though it was difficult, he never complained about it to himself or to anyone else. We assume that productivity means getting more things done each day, but in truth, productivity is all about getting important things done consistently. It's about maintaining a steady, average speed on a few things, not maximum speed on everything. When you have that list of things to do, there are clearly items that are more difficult than others. Suppose you're a salesman. Making sales calls is one of the most important things you can do to close deals. But it's also one of the hardest, because you need to disturb the person on the other side. And you may well hear a hundred no's just to get one yes. It would be natural for you, therefore, to postpone dealing with the sales calls for as long as possible. You procrastinate and avoid working on it and focus on everything else. The problem with this approach is that on many days you'd postpone it so much that you end up not making the calls at all. It always ends up as the one thing still left on your list, which is why it's recommended to do your most difficult task first thing in the morning. Earlier in the day, our willpower tends to be higher, our mind is clear, and everything is quiet. That means you'll be able to provide your best energy and effort to your most difficult task. It's your one opportunity to prioritize the thing that matters to you the most, because the deeper you get into your day, the more likely it is that unexpected tasks will demand your attention, and it becomes less and less likely that you'll be able to spend the time as you'd planned. Doing the most difficult thing first each day helps avoid that, and once you've gotten the important task out of the way, the rest will look easy in comparison, and you will feel more empowered. Number 5. Respect Time As we learn from Marcus Aurelius, Concentrate every minute like a Roman, like a man, on doing what's in front of you with precise and genuine seriousness. Tenderly, willingly, with justice. Marcus Aurelius teaches us to use our resources such as time like a wartime general, because it's our most valuable and equitable resource. Seneca, another great Stoic figure and a teacher, wrote in the first century how surprised he was by how little people seemed to value their lives as they were living them. How busy, terribly busy, everyone seemed to be and how wasteful of their time, and this has remained unchanged for the last 2,000 years. Time is arguably the most precious and the least renewable resource we have at our disposal. Imagine walking down the street and seeing a rich man just throwing away all his possessions. His money, his gold, his watch collection, all of it. You'd definitely call that person crazy, and yet we see others and ourselves throw away something far more valuable every day. Our time. The amount of time we get is uncertain, but surely limited. Wasting time is worse than wasting money, because we can't have it back when it runs out. So if we want to be productive, we need to take control of our time and start distributing it correctly. Once you decide on your task and have a clear strategy, you'll have to ignore the distractions. Even if you try to remove all distractions and are ready to start your day as you'd planned, to your brain, the allure of finding an excuse to do something easier is still strong. The hardest task is finding a way to make that starting effort pleasant. The reason that it's often so hard to start the work is that there's no expectation of an immediate reward. Sometimes that reward is years away. However, if you wrap your work up with the expectancy of an immediate reward, you give yourself a good reason to start. For example, if you avoid or delay your work to check your Instagram feed, you can make a deal that you're not allowed to log into your Instagram account again until a certain amount of work is done. This way, you get rewarded by completing the unpleasant work with something immediate. You're always in control of what you can do with your time, and you can choose to stop feeding your distractions and focus on the task at hand. Number 6. Enjoy your progress. In the words of Marcus Aurelius, Enjoyment means doing as much of what your nature requires as you can. And you can do that anywhere. Keep in mind the ease with which logos are carried through all things. That's all you need. 
For Marcus Aurelius, enjoyment meant doing his job. Success is dependent on many factors. Some are in our control, while others are not. Things in our full control include our effort, while external variables include things like luck and other people. Success should not be measured in terms of what we achieve or don't achieve, but should be measured by the amount of effort we put behind our work. Many of us don't follow through on the things we really want, because we're obsessed with the big picture, instead of keeping an eye on the crucial, small daily actions. We need to understand that building better habits is hard, and maintaining good habits is even harder. But when we do small things consistently, we see results. So the next time you work on something, measure your performance by your effort. As long as you focused 100% of your energies into it, you have your success. But don't beat yourself up if you procrastinated or couldn't reach your goal. Have some self-compassion, because research shows that it's forgiving yourself and not beating yourself up for it that makes you want to fix the issue and continue. While success is not completely in your control, your focus and your productivity is. So keep learning and keep enjoying your progress. As I said at the beginning, this video has been made possible by Blinkist. We all know the benefits of reading. Most of us have a book on the bedside table, that one we always promised ourselves we'd get around to, but the majority of us don't even come close to finishing, often not even opening that book at all. To justify our procrastination, we start believing that we don't have enough time even though we spend countless hours doing activities that bring us little joy, such as commuting, chores and staring at our phones. Blinkist helps us turn these little blocks of unallocated time into precious and rewarding moments for learning and reflection by taking the core insights and need-to-know information from the best non-fiction books that you want to read and packaging them down into just 15 minutes for you to read or listen to. Blinkist now connects 14 million readers worldwide to the biggest ideas from best-selling non-fiction books, covering everything from mindfulness and management to philosophy and psychology with new titles added every single day. Being a teacher and a YouTuber, I love the fact that in less than 15 minutes I can get the relevant information I need to stay informed and healthy. I use Blinkist whenever I'm in between lectures, and I've read and listened to a load of books on Stoicism, like Lives of the Stoic by Ryan Holiday and Stefan Hansel, How to Think Like a Roman Emperor by Donald Robertson, and How to Be a Stoic by Massimo Pigliucci. I highly recommend you check out these wonderful books on Blinkist. The first 100 people to click on the link in the description will get unlimited access for the first week to try it out, and a 25% discount if you want a full membership. You can also cancel at any time in your trial week. If you enjoyed this video, please do make sure to check out our full Stoicism playlist, and for more videos to help you find success and happiness using ancient philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.